gentlemen, and welcome to the great moments in music. Tonight we'll be bringing you history and music from centuries past. The music of our history had almost been completely forgotten, and we were losing it fast. Wait a minute. Our music was almost totally gone, and we were... We had one chance to get it back. Stop, stop, stop. You're jumping ahead. If we're going to tell this story, we've got to do it right. Why don't we let Johnny tell the story? After all, we couldn't have saved our music without him. Thank you. <laughs> another century, another era. The thrilling and joyous sounds that once brought the people of America hope have long since been forgotten. First, I think you should tell our audience why and how we had to save, to save the music of America. All right. It all began about a week and a half ago. I recently got a job at the Smithsonian Museum of American History, working under Professor Franklin, head historian on staff. We were working on organizing a whole stack of books dating back to the 17th century. At the time, I was carrying about 12 books at the same time, which isn't easy. <laughs> oh, are those books from the basement? Yep, I have them, well, had them sorted alphabetically. Now, let's see, I'm looking for a specific book called The Great American Songbook. Sounds interesting. It is, if it's still there. What's that supposed to mean? Ah, uh, here it is. Oh, no! No! No, no, no! What? It's gone. It's really gone. What? The music. Professor, please explain. This is the book that holds our country's music. But the pages are blank. Precisely. The Great American Songbook is the book that holds each piece of music from our history. It is the guide to the soundtrack of America since the country was founded. As we forget our country's history and music, Another page fades and the music is lost completely. Soon, the whole book will be lost, and with it, the spirit of America, if we don't do something about it. How much is left? Only the star-spangled banner. Only? I've got to get it back, and I don't know anything about music. Oh, all those violin lessons I never took. <laughs> Hang on, we'll just find someone who does know music. Good, who do you suggest? I don't know. Wait! I know exactly who to call. Unfortunately, the professor was about to call us at the worst time possible. You see, Rebecca, Katie, and I are part of a music trio. Katie and I had taken a class from the professor, and because of this, the professor knew about us and knew about the trio. We happened to be in the middle of our last rehearsal before a concert, so as you can imagine, it was a really bad time to be distracted from fine-tuning the details of our music. Okay. You guys, do you hear that? Do you hear that tempo? That's exactly where we need to bring this piece up to, okay? Remember the accents that measure 25 and the dynamics of the whole piece, okay? And we're not going to run it through the top, so Emily, let's just hear your piece and Rebecca and I are going to listen. Okay? Let's go.
Katie, I need you here at the museum in ten minutes. The fate of our country depends on it. The fate of our country? What? Professor? No argument. See you in ten minutes. Uh, but, Professor, wait. Hmm. Hey! Who was that? Professor Franklin. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Something's wrong. Professor Franklin? Franklin! <laughs> As in the guy who almost killed himself in a flight, a kite, in a lightning storm? You are so dumb. <laughs> Aren't they the same person? Benjamin Franklin lived over 250 years ago. Oh. Yeah. Admittedly, the professor has definitely done the thing with the kite. Yeah. He's crazy. Yeah, I know that. And actually, everyone knows that. But I also know his tone of voice. Something is definitely wrong. I think we should go. We quickly arrived at the museum, curious as to what was going on. Here's the porter's office. <laughs> well, hey, Katie, here, put these on. Safety glasses. What are these for? <laughs> what was that? Oh, that's another failed attempt. Failed attempt of oh, uh, Okay, never mind, Professor. What's wrong? There's no time to lose. I've got to send you back. What, what is this all about? Look at this. Ah, that's a book. This isn't just any book. The pages are blank. Precisely. What does this have to do with anything? I've got to send you all back in time. You're right. He is crazy. Shh. OK, Professor, we don't have time for this. You're the only one who can help me. I'm sorry. I'll just have to find someone else. But when I got back from my lunch break, the professor told me what had happened. I was so angry that none of the three understood what would happen to our country's music. The girls continued to have their music rehearsal. They were getting ready for a big concert and didn't want to waste time on anything else. Well, something was about to happen. Something that would change their minds. <laughs> Now there are a few things to go over before I let you use the time machine. 
machine. I'll give you a list of locations and times you'll be traveling to. I need a piece of music from each time, so make sure that you collect enough music from each location. How does the time machine work? That's where I come in. Now, girls, this is John. He'll help you with whatever you need. Your voice sounds so familiar. Uh, Johnny will be there to give you advice and information regarding history and music. He'll also be able to communicate with me, should you run into any trouble. Trouble? If the time machine breaks down. Oh, oh we're not going to get stuck in time for the rest of our lives if this thing breaks. Right? Mm, no guarantee. All right, off you go. <laughs> uh, the time machine will only allow you to spend 13 minutes at each location. 13 minutes, remember that. Why 13? Like the 13 original colonies. Precisely. That was right. I know a fact that 13 is a lucky number. No, it's not. It is where I come from. Make sure that you're not seen or heard from anyone at any point in time. Good luck. But what if I oh, come, come on. on? So the adventure begins. Okay, how does this thing work? I'll show you. See this panel? This is where you type in the time that you want to go to. September 28th, 1781. Enter. Okay, now as soon as I turn this switch here... <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> where are we? The question, Rebecca, isn't where are we? It's when are we? <laughs>
couple of hours. <laughs> but isn't that amazing? No electricity or internet of any kind. And look how much fun it can be. Yeah. We better get going with this black one. <laughs> yes! Okay! <laughs> Yes. Yeah. These were very dark times. 
when America, which had once stood together and fought together, uh, was now fighting against itself. It was a broken country, and the music very much reflected that.
present. <laughs> or, at this moment, the future. Be quiet. We're in the middle of a rehearsal. Uh, what kind of music are we supposed to find here? We're in 1955. The fight was becoming popular again, but in a different way. It was becoming a huge hobby. So, uh, and fife and drum course could be found all up and down the East Coast. And the modern aspect of fife and drumming was coming into the picture. I can tell you a little about, about uh, this generation. Okay, go ahead. Well, the New York Regimentals, founded by John McDonough, created a new sound, a sound that would inspire many fifers to take on a more lyrical, musical style of fife and drum. Years before starting this war, John McDonough had written two fife solos to be used in fife and drumming competitions one of which he called a long came spider.
The stand piece was called Clem, and like all of John McDonough's music, did not fail to impress.
together. It's a time when we as Americans can all sing together and remember what this country is all about. The War of 1812 or any other war in America's history was a big moment when everyone turned to music to bring us together. Everyone also turned to music in celebration.